Hey guys, kind of want to bring you a cool thing that that I picked up here that um, show you a little bit about it and kind of the disassembly process. I'll I'll try not to fumble through it too badly because um, well, I'll explain it in a minute. But this is my wife's aunt's grandfather's 1903 Colt Hammerless. Uh, he was in World War One, and we believe this trap went through World War One with him. Um, I believe it was a in his tunic. I don't believe this was ever carried on as an actual official sidearm. Obviously, it was never issued to him. He purchased it, um, but it does date 1915 manufacture date. Um, here's the holster that came with it. As far as we can tell, it's original. Here's the gentleman's name. Oh, that's right. You're looking at it this way. Here's the name, uh, the date. Uh, May 1st, 1917, and uh, some serial number stuff. Um, it also has what I believe to be the original magazines. Um, I have not dated these. The guys get real technical with, you know, the way the floor plates are on and whatnot. Uh, but these appear to be, I have no reason to believe why these wouldn't be original. It is chambered in 32 uh, automatic. Uh, it's a cool automatic pistol, so um, you can get a 32 for this. And um, it, it's it's a really sweet shooting gun. I've shot it once since I got it. He, he came with some ammo, and I shut up all the old ammo just to just to get get through it. So it's a little dirty right now, and it's oily, so it makes this assembly a little tougher. Uh, interesting function, you know, 1903 patent dates. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like a 19 mini 1911, but different. Um, obviously, you have your internal hammer. It's not hammerless. The hammer is in here. It's not striker fired, um, in, in the way that we would think it, of it. Uh, you have a heel release for your mag. Uh, the sights are teeny, 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 tiny. I mean, there's just, I don't even know if I can give you a sight picture. Uh, I can't do it, but they're, they're teeny. So, uh, super soft shooting little gun. Um, you know, 32, there's not much to it. Hardly kicks all. It's fairly hefty for how little it is. Um, and then, it's got two things. So one, the, the field strip process on it, super, super easy. However, to go past the field strip process, apparently this gets awfully finicky. I haven't attempted it yet. I watched a video on how to do it and I went, no, nah, I'm good. Um, really, it doesn't currently need it. I, I took a Q-tip to it, got it nice and oily. I know a lot of guys don't run their guns wet. I tend to run my guns wet. Um, I just, it just, it's my philosophy and some, what I've kind of learned off of people who I trust uh, who know what they're doing and they run their guns wet and so that's typically what I do so uh, This is pretty cool family heirloom, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a distant relative, but it's still relative uh, I, I need to do some some research on him. if anybody knows anything about him. His name is J. Albert Cotting And I can get more information if anybody's interested um, I would love to know where he was and I need to do some some information on his unit or do some research on his unit so I can find out where he was and uh, find out where this gun has been. So it'd be kind of cool to see where it traveled. So, but as far as this assembly, this is it's pretty easy. I don't know if you can see in the frame right here. There is a little arrow with a line. What you're going to do is so this doesn't have like a guide rod that sticks out like a Glock or a modern pistol. It goes back. So you're going to take that little arrow and you're going to line that right to the edge of the frame. Once that's aligned to the frame, the barrel itself actually twists and there's, I want to say four or five locking lugs in the top of the slide and it'll disengage from that and the whole thing can come apart. The way I found to do it, I stick my thumb through this, uh, thumb through the, uh, um, the trigger guard, push back on it, line up that arrow. And it's not exact, you just kind of got to get it close. And it would help if it wasn't so slippery. There you go. So on this one, it's just passed. And then once you get to there, the whole thing slides off. And there you can see your, your locking lugs. And those locking lugs interface with, let's see if I can show you, the, the locking lugs on, on the top, or is it the, oh, I'm sorry, the top locking lugs on the, uh, on the frame. Um, so that's how, that's general field strip. Pretty, pretty easy. Um, and, and for, you know, this gun is, is 103 years old, and for 103 years old, it's, it's in pretty good shape. Tons of rifling, um, you know, the barrel shows minimal wear, it's, uh, you know, there's some rust and there's some, some rust issues and some pitting in here. Nothing horrible, nothing that, 
I'm really that worried about. As long as it doesn't get worse, and, and I with a good oil, and I, and I ran it and oiled it again, um, I'm hoping that there's no more rust issues. Um, and not that it really has any. I mean, the finish on it's pretty decent. So um, I don't know how much I'll shoot it. I, I worry about where on a what's essentially going to be an heirloom gun for me. You know, I will take it out to the range every once in a while, but it's not going to be something I put thousands of rounds through. Reassembly, uh, I'm a little clunkier at. I've only done this a couple of times, so don't make fun of me too bad. Um, you want to take your, your make sure the locking lugs line up with what would be, I don't know if you call this a bushing or whatever, but the front of the of the slide. I'll slide down in, and then you got to find the sweet spot, and the sweet spot is that recess cut in there, right there in that frame. I don't know if you can see the top of this. I'm sorry, in the slide. The recess cut in the top of the slide. Your, um, there you go. So your, uh, what do you call it? The locking lugs. Just rotate into there. And then, uh, with your guide rod already installed into the frame, you're going to go ahead and start this, and start the slide on the frame. Oops. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing this all goofy because trying to give the camera the best angle. So once you start to slide it in, this is where it gets a little funky. You gotta push the slide past, uh, I don't even know what you'd call this, I don't know if this is the, the, the safety, I don't know what this is, the little the little detent. Um, once you pop it past the detent, you gotta start paying attention, make sure the guide rod stays in, and make sure the barrel stays in place. And then, and like I said, it would help if this wasn't so greasy, get this, arrow and line lined up to where it was before and on mine it's just past the edge of the frame and you're trying to line up those locking lugs and there they go once they line up the barrel rotates and you can bring the slide forward and the gun is reassembled you function test good to go so pretty cool piece of uh, family history that's a quick field strip demonstration uh, this is one I'll never sell you know usually I'm whatever I don't really collect guns I'm more of a uh, more of a um, you know work gun kind of guy. All my ARs and my pistols are all M and P's and Glocks. Pretty much just stuff that's boring and that you can pick up anywhere. So, um, but overall, sweet shooting little gun. I love it. Um, it may be the first non 22 my daughter shoots, just because it is so soft shooting. Uh, we'll see because it does have a pretty pretty short trigger. So, anyway, I hope you guys like this video just kind of gives you a rundown on the uh, the 1903 hammerless uh, as far as field stripping it and then the, kind of the history of this one's kind of cool to have so uh, hope you found it interesting see ya